Uh, we are awaiting microphones, so if it sounds like we are yelling across the room, that's because we are. Um, the question of the day is, should you go to law school? It's an important question that's on many students' minds, but as Professor Beatty and I were talking about on the way over, it, it's not a question that we often talk about in the open uh, in a way that's practically useful to students, and so we're trying to remedy that here. Uh, we have an all-star panel to do that. We have four brilliant speakers, all of whom are trained as lawyers, three of whom are Dartmouth alums. Uh, Professor Kalish, unfortunately, can't yet join us today, but she will for a future event like this. So very quickly on our format, each panelist will present an argument answering the question posed in the title for seven or eight minutes or so. They will do so uh, in order of uh, uh, experience, seniority, whatever you want to call it. So uh, Jerry, you're going first. Um, and then they'll respond to one another for a bit. Perhaps they'll disagree, perhaps they'll argue with one another. I don't know their views on this question, so we shall see. Uh, but then we'll leave a ton of time for your questions. <laughs> So if you have them, uh, please please ask them shortly. I'll give a quick introduction of each person before they start. We don't have a ton of time. So uh, Professor Gerald Rosenberg, for those of you who don't know, is a professor at the University of Chicago. And happily, he's joined us as a professor at Dartmouth uh, as well. He's probably the most important scholar of law and policy uh, alive today, in my view. And he's also uh, an extraordinarily kind human being who sent my five-week-old daughter a CD of lullabies earlier today. So, so Jerry, should the students here go to law school? Her name was Emily. Emily had gone to the University of Chicago as an undergraduate. During her four years, she took all of my courses. I supervised her senior thesis. I wrote her letter of recommendation. She went to the University of Chicago Law School, where I was able to hire her twice as a teaching assistant to help me in courses she had taken as an undergraduate. It was the spring quarter of her third year, and I was walking to teach my undergraduate law and society class, a class I taught last fall here as well. Ran into Emily and had the most surreal conversation I think I've ever had. So Emily said, what are you going to teach? And I said, the Guineer et al. book, which is a book about how law schools are institutionally and structurally uh, sexist. And Emily said, oh, tell them it's not so bad. And I said, Emily, what are you talking about? Your first year, you were in my office at least once a week in tears. And then we switched sides. Emily said, I know, I know, law school's been terrible. I said, Emily, what are you talking about? You're the editor-in-chief of one of the journals. You have your dream job lined up when you graduate. And oh, by the way, you met the love of your life and you're getting married next month. And Emily said, I know, I know, I should be happy, but I'm not the same kind, gentle person I was before I started law school. Law school has sucked my soul. This, it turns out, is a common reaction. I put together uh, two pages, it's double-sided, of readings. And one of the readings is a note by a Harvard Law student uh, called Making Docile Lawyers. And in that article, uh, the student writes, the, quote, pacification of Harvard Law students is a direct consequence of the psychological distress that so often accompanies a Harvard Law School education. The author wrote about resignation, confusion, and a loss of capacity to chart your own future. Continued, a disturbing number of Harvard Law School students feel this inchoate sense of having made a bad bargain, of having lost something precious, or even of having had this precious something stolen by a law school that gave them nothing in return. So that's Emily's law school has sucked my soul to a T. Add to that the likelihood that you will be hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt when you graduate. The American Bar Association reported in 2016 that the average loan balance for law school graduates was $145,500, average. 2016, the ABA did a report on the mental health of law students and lawyers. 
23% of law students reported mild or moderate anxiety. 17% reported depression. 14% reported severe anxiety. Uh, the daughter of a family friend is a third year law student at Harvard, and of course, before she went, I did my level best to save her from law school. I failed, but I gave her the readings that you have on that sheet. A couple weeks ago, she e emailed me. She's a third year student, and she said, you know, I just happened to reread this Harvard Law student note, and boy, nothing has changed, uh, which I found very revealing. Now, why does this happen? Uh, well, one good source is Duncan Kennedy, who's the Carter Professor of General, General Jurisprudence Emeritus at Harvard Law School, and he's written about the law school experience. I'll read you a bunch of quotes. The teachers are overwhelmingly white, male, and deadly straight in middle class and manner. The classroom is hierarchical with a vengeance. The teachers receive a degree of deference and arousing fears that remind one of high school rather than college. Now, good news, there's been change. Now some of the overwhelmingly white, deadly straight, and middle class and manner professors are women. Um, now, law professors typically have three more years of education than you do. However, since they think they are the smartest people in the world, that doesn't bother them. Your first year, you probably know, is a prescribed curriculum in large sections, often as large as 100, and you're called on without warning the so-called Socratic method. Duncan Kennedy calls this the infantilization of law school. Making matters worse, as he writes, what teachers teach with basic skills is wrong, is nonsense about what the law is and how it works. It's nonsense for three reasons. As he puts it, law schools teach simple skills, quote, in a way that almost completely mystifies the law, uh, what the law is and how it works. Okay. Um, second, law school is both deeply political and those values are hidden. The right answer is presented as a matter of logic and sometimes efficiency, but that obscures the fact that there are several plausible different answers to legal problems, and choosing one of them as right is a value choice, is a political choice. As Kennedy puts it, quote, everything taught except the formal rules themselves and the argumentative techniques for manipulating them is policy and nothing more. But if you point this out, you're told you're being political and you're not thinking like a lawyer. Third, legal education treats law and judicial decisions as they're abstracted from the larger society in which they operate. It ignores culture, it ignores politics, it ignores everything that makes a political system and a social and cultural system important. It treats law as if the judges were on Mars. Now, in most classes, you're graded on one exam at the end of the quarter. That's the only work. And unfortunately, you're not examined on the work you've done in the class. You're not examined on the cases you've read. You've read you're examined on the principles of law in that subject which you have not been taught. Which means there's virtually no correlation between the amount of work you put into a class and your grade. Once you figure that out, law school is the easiest thing in the world. You spend an hour a day studying, that's all it takes. Uh, as Kennedy puts it, quote, students generally experience grades as almost totally arbitrary, close quote. Former graduate student I taught at Chicago wrote to me at the end of his first year of law school at Washington University, quote, okay, you were right. The classes I worked the hardest for for the ones I, for the ones I did the worst in. Um, I was much happier and healthier and successful second semester when I eased up a bit. Uh, another former student from the University of Michigan at the end of her first year wrote, you were right, law school sucks. I'm currently taking con law and I have had such high expectations for it after taking your class, the undergraduate class. While his presentation to professors on the subject is going over our heads, some of my classes last semester fell short of triggering our intellectual minds. I guess if I wanted an academic and intellectual experience, I should have gone to grad school. 
but then there's a practice of law. Lawyers suffer from more addiction, depression, and suicidal thought than any other profession. Who says that? The American Bar Association says that. Quote, more than a third of attorneys are problem drinkers, and over a quarter are clinically depressed. This is a study uh, sponsored by the ABA. Lawyers have the highest rate of major depressive disorder of any occupational group, and among the highest rates of alcoholism. And I can give you more data, but for the for time constraints, I won't. Um, now look, if I were to ask you to identify some of the major challenges facing the US, I doubt any of you would say there are not enough lawyers. Uh, but you say, no, no, you're going to go to law school to change the world, to help the needy, to fight discrimination. Large numbers of first year law students say that. By the time they graduate, almost none of them do. Why? There are very few jobs, they're comparatively poorly paid, and doing so is not respected by your professors nor your classmates. As I think you may know, lawyers are among the least respected professions in the country. I'll save you the Gallup poll results. Let me end with reminding you of two jokes. Uh, from Car Talk, you may not be old enough to remember Car Talk on National Public Radio. It's a wonderful show. Uh, but as you uh, may know, in, in the psych labs, uh, where they used to use rats in experiments, they're now using lawyers, because they've discovered there's some things the rats won't do. Uh, and then, of course, uh, the perennial question, what do a lawyer and a single sperm have in common? They each have a one in a million chance of becoming a human being. Thank you. <laughs> Professor Sonu Beatty. Okay, great. Um, <clears throat> let me say I don't have a sheet. I, uh, Jerry, appreciate your sheet. If I did have a sheet, my sources would be Legally Blonde. It would probably be on it. I don't know if any of you have seen that. Check that out. Um, okay, so the question was, should you go to law school? And so I'm a political philosopher. And if we're going to talk about should, the first thing we're going to do is set up under what conditions. So under ideal conditions. And what do I mean by ideal conditions? Let's leave costs to one side. Let's leave the fact that law school is going to be three years. Of, obviously, you have to give a commitment of time. Let's leave to one side stakeholders like your parents or friends that may suggest you go someplace else, right? So do something else. So if we put those aside, in ideal conditions, yes, you should go to law school. And um, let me say why. You should go to law school because the law provides you the language that is used to justify exercises of public power. That is, the language of the law is what explains, for instance, that we have the oldest still functioning constitution in the world. It also explains why when folks have disagreements, whether it be an accident uh, on the road, whether it be uh, something that happens in business, disagreements are managed by the law. The language of the law is the language of power, the language of justifying this exercise of public power, whether it be the justices on the Supreme Court, whether it be a judge, whether it be a prosecutor, whether it be any kind of litigants. And so seeing this power, seeing this language is actually quite important. And so what I want to say is that leave aside whether you become a lawyer, right? The question was, should you go to law school? Yes, so you can learn this language. And so what can you do if you learn this language? Well, one, you could be a lawyer, okay? And you know, may end up doing something, uh, you could be working at a firm or whatever, but you don't need to be a lawyer, right? In fact, you can be an academic. You can be the leading expert in law and policy, and I would agree with Professor Nicholas's statement there. Part of the reason Professor Rosenberg's work is so nice is because he did go to law school. It is precisely because he sees the limits of this, this language, how this language actually is not everything. There are limits to it. But precisely because he went to law school, he understands that. And that understanding is quite nice, and not only if you're going to be an academic, but for whatever you do. So I would say you should go to law school under ideal conditions, because no matter what you do, you will learn this language uh, that justifies Rachel Schultz-Bright is a 2018 graduate of this fine college. 
recent graduate of Georgetown Law Center, associate at Robeson Gray in Boston. She's edited legal journals, held clerkships and internships, and served in various advocacy organizations uh, in Boston and DC. And, and while at Dartmouth was an utterly brilliant public policy and law student, and we're especially grateful and lucky that uh, she has returned to Dartmouth to speak with all of you. Thank you, Herschel. Um, so my answer is kind of similar to um, Professor Davies. Um, I would say yes, you should go to law school if you know why you want to go to law school, you know what kind of program will get you to where you want to go after law school, and if you know when you want to go to law school. So law school is, like has been mentioned, it's hard, it's expensive, and it's three years of your life. So you want to make sure you're going for a good reason. I'm glad that Professor Beatty also brought up Legally Blonde, because that was going to be my example of a good reason not to go to law school. <laughs> um, I don't know if all of you have seen the movie. It's getting old at this point, I guess. But um, Elle Woods goes to law school because her boyfriend broke up with her because she wasn't serious enough. And he was going to Harvard, so she followed him to Harvard Law School. Um, no real reason why she wanted to be a lawyer. She just wanted to get her boyfriend back. And it worked out for her because she was brilliant. And, you know, props to Elle Woods, but that might not happen for all of us. Um, so I would say go to law school if you know what being a lawyer is like. I'm not saying you have to know exactly what kind of job you want. But think at least about, you know, do you like reading and writing? Do you like dealing with people on some of the most stressful, important, pivotal days of their lives? It's a lot put on you. Um, you know, it's often most lawyer jobs can be long hours and a lot of work. So that's one part of it. But also think about, you know, do you like the idea of being a criminal lawyer, civil lawyer? Do you like the idea of working in public policy or government, working with big corporations and Fortune 500 companies? You know, are there industries or issues that you care about? Do you want to go to law school to be a women's rights activist and you know work on women's health? Do you want to work for firms that deal with intellectual property issues and technology? You know, it's a huge variety of things that you can do if you go to law school but at least have some sense of what going to law school will get you and whether those are the things that you want to do. Um, my next point is, you know, think about what type of law school would get you there. Um, law school, kind of as has already been mentioned, is in a lot of ways a very elitist, traditionalist profession. And there are a lot of kind of unwritten things about what jobs you can get depending on where you go to school, or what jobs you can get depending on what types of classes you did, or what types of internships you did, or what types of grades you did. And so it's kind of useful to know, or at least have a sense of what those might be before you embark on this journey. Um, so like for instance, you know, if you want to work at a big firm, look up people's biographies at big firms and see what kinds of experiences they had and whether those are things that you can do. Um, if you want to work for a big public interest firm, you know, a lot of the jobs at the ACLU, like has been mentioned, are very hard to get. And so, you know, you're probably going to want to get top grades at a top school, get clerkships, do that kind of thing. But looking at the biographies and experiences of, you know, people who are doing the things that you would want to do after law school can give you kind of some help with that. Um, and, you know, law schools differ greatly. Um, you know, there is the traditional kind of 1L doctrinal programs that you're in a big classroom, a professor is calling on you randomly and you have to just recite the facts and the law and give them their answer. But personally, I went to Georgetown and they have this really cool program that, you know, plug for Georgetown, um, that did a different 1L curriculum where it was kind of a liberal arts, critical, realist interpretation of that first year curriculum, um, where you know, we had small seminars to really try to deconstruct the law, talk about things like Professor Beatty was saying about the language of the law and the inherent politicization of the law and all of those things that you know, in other programs wouldn't be on the surface. So I really enjoyed that. And that's you know, another thing to look for is 
what kind of program meshes with who you are and what you want to do. Um, my final kind of, again, just like practical point is to think about when you want to go. You know, I went straight through from undergrad to law school and that worked for me because I still had the academic energy. There wasn't something that I wanted to do for two or three years before I went to law school. Um, and, you know, it worked out that I was able to go to a law school that I wanted to go to at that point. But a lot of my friends, you know, did take two or three years off or, you know, are still in their kind of first career and maybe at some point in the future will go. Because, you know, maybe their GPA or their LSAT wasn't where they wanted them to be. Maybe they were really burnt out from four years at Dartmouth and, you know, wanted to take some time to recharge and do it right. Or maybe they found the perfect job that they wanted to do for two years in a cool city with, you know, stuff like that. So I think that's another really important thing to think about when you're thinking about law school, because you get one shot to do it and you want to do it right. You want to set yourself up to be as successful as you can be and keep as many doors open as you can. Um, so I would, I have some responses to other points from them, but we'll get to that. But I would just, you know, to sum up, yeah, go to law school if you know why you want to go, if you know what kind of school can get you there, and if you have a sense of when makes sense for you to go. Jasmine Lee is a 2019 graduate of Dartmouth College and a current 2L at Boston College Law School. She's a clerk at the Los Angeles City Attorney's Office, has been, is and has been president of important student organizations at both BC Law and Dartmouth. Uh, and, and like Rachel, was an utterly brilliant public law, public policy and law student while at Dartmouth, and we are especially grateful and lucky to have her with us today. Yeah, so the question was, should you go to law school? And I've been putting a lot of thought into it since I got the prompt. And my answer is the favorite lawyer phrase, it depends, um, which a lot of people find annoying. Um, sorry, but it, it's the go-to phrase for lawyers. Um, and so the reason why I say it depends, um, I think, as Gerald has brought up, uh, law school is hard and it is a financial commitment. Um, it's three years and every year, uh, I guess depending on like, what financial aid programs you are on, scholarships, etc. but on a baseline uh, for someone who isn't receiving any of those, it's 60K on average per year. And so if you sum that up for three years, it's you know 180K and that's not possibly accounting for like invisible fees of like finding an apartment, like paying for all of that. So it's definitely a commitment um, that you, a financial commitment that you definitely want to make sure that you know what you're getting into upon going to law school before you know committing yourself in that direction. Um, so before you decide to go to law school, you should really talk to a lawyer. Not for advice, but um, just to get a sense of what they do. Because I think the law profession, um, your family members might tell you like, oh, go to law school or become a lawyer. But do you truly know what that means? What kind of work a lawyer actually does? So I think um, at least prior to making that commitment to taking the LSATs, or like even looking at different law schools, I think one thing that uh, you may benefit from is actually talking to um, a lawyer, and Dartmouth has a lawyer's association too, so I think you can, you can like search it up and like find people who are lawyers, and I'm sure they'll be happy to talk to you. So um, definitely you wanna make sure that your decision to attend any law school is informed. Um, so this question, should you go to law school, um, I can kind of talk about like where I made that decision to go to law school. I graduated in 2019. Um, I worked for two years with AmeriCorps in their Justice Corps program um, where I was uh, put in a, a resource center uh, 
uh, at a courthouse where we were providing self-help assistance in the areas of family, family law, evictions, um, restraining orders. So these are people who don't have um, representation from the attorney, so they're coming for assistance with help with their forms. And so these are you know, people who, don't, who can't afford to have an attorney. And there's so many people in the United States who can't afford to have attorneys and who need attorneys. Um, and I think there's like a shortage of family law attorneys as well. Um, so there is a need for attorneys, but um, at the current state, like uh, Pastor Joel had mentioned, it, they are pricey. Um, but I think having worked there for two years and seeing, uh, getting, to work with the family law attorneys who were providing assistance uh, to people who are in need, and I kind of became exposed to the different areas of law and how law could actually make a difference uh, for people going through really hard times. And when I say family law, you're thinking of divorce, parentage, eviction, people getting kicked out of their homes. And so I think those two years were um, of interacting with my colleagues family law attorneys and getting a sense of what the law can do for people kind of affirmed my desire to go to law school. Um, I'm also a second generation um, individual. Um, first, um, so my parents are primarily non-English speakers, so I also um, am coming from a place of general interest in access to the law. And so, uh, I would say that also kind of fueled my desire to enter law school and get a sense of uh, what the law is about, become the first lawyer in my family, um, et cetera. So law school is hard. Let that, there's no question about it. Um, those who don't say it's not hard. I say it is, so we're gonna go with that. Um, Law school is hard, and when I say hard, I'll describe what I mean by hard, is because you're learning an entirely new language, essentially. Um, so I think, like, what is summary judgments? What are motions to compel? What are um, trial courts? What are uh, court of appeals? You know, we talk about this in college. We have like lots of theoretical, we're very critical about these institutions, but then when I think Entering law school, I became exposed to these terminology on like a very regular basis. So I think just being introduced to that new vocabulary was very hard. Um, but at the same time, uh, you know, now I'm learning things about our court systems and how people can gain access to them and the importance of lawyers um, in American society. Um, and so. I'm a 2L, right, so I'm still figuring it out. I got through 1L, which was kind of the hard part of being exposed to all of that new terminology. So as a 2L, it's a little bit better. Um, so my final answer would be, it depends to that question. And for anyone who wants to talk more, can also talk more about it. Before everybody argues with one another, please uh, join me in, in thanking everyone. Okay, that, that was brilliant. Um, why don't we go in the same order and, and take a, maybe two minutes each to respond to one another, and then we will open it up to your questions. And I'm told to remind everyone that um, at the conclusion of the formal segment at 6.30, from 6.30 to 7, there's a reception with food as I understand it, and people can just informally hang out, talk to the panelists, get their advice, get their recommendations. Um, so please do stick around for that. But yeah, why don't we go in the same order, uh, some quick responses here. Quick response, I'll, I'll start with Rachel, who I think is in part right that um, you can't know if you want to go to law school unless you've actually worked in the law. Jasmine worked for two years in the law. So if you think you want to be a lawyer, you're in a college that doesn't have a law school and I hope it never gets one, right? <laughs> but for God's sakes, don't commit yourself to three years and tuition plus room and board and everything is going to be close to a quarter million dollars without knowing anything other than your own image of what lawyers do. Do uh, public interest law, be a paralegal in a big firm, do something for a year or two. Then 
If you really like it, if it interests you, sure, go to law school. You can't know what kind of lawyer you're going to be if you've never tried different things. So in response to them, and I don't think Jasmine would disagree, um, work in the law for a year or two and then decide whether to apply. Uh, to apply. Sono says, look, the language of law is really interesting, it's important. Um, that's exactly right. It doesn't take three years to learn it. You learn it in the first semester of law school. So what do you do? You can take uh, other courses here at Dartmouth. His constitutional law courses, you'll learn a lot. My guess is they're courses in the philosophy department. Read for crying out loud. Uh, the New York Times, Adam Liptak, does a really nice job. Times prints excerpts of opinions. The Wall Street Journal does something similar. You can learn these skills without committing three years of your life and a quarter million dollars to a profession you know nothing about. Okay, and that all makes sense. And so I will say that uh, <clears throat> one thing about law school is that law school is an intellectually fun. There is a way of this learning, and so uh, Professor, I mean, you know, uh, Jerry's totally right that you don't need to go to law school in order to learn that language. But what law school can do is provide you a credential, because all, it's a professional school, you're getting a credential. With that credential, even if you decide not to go uh, to law school, uh, or to be a lawyer, uh, you can, that opens a way in which whatever you're doing, there's a, when you're talking to someone in a professional context and they find out, oh, you went to law school, that the idea of that credential opens up doors. So there's opportunities there. I will also echo the statements of others here that, you know, definitely take some time off before going to law school. In part, because if you go straight away, you know, it's maybe burnt out, you may not sort of, you won't have a sense, you, you won't have a sense of whether, you know, it would be fun to be a lawyer, to, you know, so talk to lawyers. The other thing is that if you take some time away and then go to law school, you'll see and appreciate it as an intellectual exercise. So I agree with a lot that's been said here that if you approach law school as an intellectual exercise with the idea that obviously it's going to open doors, it's professional advancement if you seek to become actually a, a practicing lawyer, but if you view it as an intellectual exercise, I think it will be, as Jasmine says, fun in a way, right? I don't know if you use that word, Jasmine, but I'm going to take it as fun, uh, but also difficult. Right? Uh, it is also difficult. Um, yeah, and I, I don't really disagree with any of that. I think that, you know, law school can be great. I had a great experience in law school. I actually was able to take super interesting classes, do great practicum, practicums and internships and things like that while I was in law school, which I think helped me, you know, figure out what I wanted to do in the long term. On the point of whether you should take time or not, um, I went straight through and, you know, like I said, that worked for me. But I did, you know, intern while I was in college for the Massachusetts Attorney General's office and for an immigration law nonprofit. And I think both of those did, like you guys were saying, you know, help inform me about whether this was the right path. Um, and, you know, again, on the expensive part, all of that. I am working at a big firm right now as well. My eventual goal is to work um, in the public interest, you know, appellate law sphere and like work on, you know, the political important issues that I care about. But yeah, I gotta pay the loans off first, you know? So I think that those are all things that you guys should be thinking about and things that are really important to be informed about. Um, and absolutely, you can enjoy law school. It's not all doom and gloom, um, but you know there are certain parts of it that are. So again, I think our theme so far has been be informed, um, and like Jasmine said, you know, reach out to people and ask them questions. I have never met a lawyer who doesn't like talking about their experience as a lawyer. Um, we talk a lot for a living, so definitely ask people about coffee dates and things like that. Um, Happy to talk to people. Um, I'm sure Jasmine is too, although we're still lost. But um, yeah. Yeah, I think just to add on to like the different things that you can do to get a sense of what law school is, what lawyers do, 
um, that are fairly accessible. One, you can court watch. Um, courts are public. The public can go and watch, um, you know, a court case happening. In, um, and you can do an internship during the summer. Um, I think nonprofits specifically always like ask for volunteers, especially in family law eviction, um, or in the government sector. At the LA City Attorney's Office, they also like had some college interns as well. So um, just like take a look at those websites. Um, you can read the books, but like books like how to prepare for law school, but I kind of question whether or not any book reading can prepare you for the actual experience of it but that can also be helpful. Um, and again, just talk to attorneys. Um, so just to respond to, to like some of the points Professor Joe made, um, I think one thing that stuck out to me was it's a bad bargain. It's, it's a passive exercise. And I will say first, the 1L year is about exposing you to the terminology of that's used by lawyers and is used in court cases. And so in some ways it is very mechanical. It's not like college classrooms where you're critically discussing the socioeconomic implications of why, the history of why. We're looking at the facts of the case and why the judge held the way that he or she did. But in another respect, um, on the flip side, after learning all of that terminology, um, I've had friends, um, classmates work at the ACLU. Um, there's some working in the Innocence Project. And so just thinking about all of the injustices that exist you know, across the country because of um, socioeconomic uh, reasons, um, I think there's an opportunity to, like, like a cool opportunity that's given to um, law school students, uh, prospective lawyers, and lawyers themselves to make a difference, whether it be in like a pro bono respect, um, even if you're working at a law firm. Um, secondly, um, Professor Gerald said, it's deeply political, but hidden. Um, and yes, as a law school student, you are intaking a lot of information from a professor who's like lecturing at you. Um, one for the purposes of, you know, once again, learning that terminology as a 1L uh, student. Um, but I don't know if this may be a shift in law schools, um, but at least at Boston College Law, we had a, I think law schools are trying to be more aware, like this critique that it is not, um, not thinking critically about um, these issues. So I had a critical perspectives requirement class where we all sat down and like talked about you know racial, uh, socioeconomic differences and like that role in uh, some of the cases that we're reading. And so things may be changing, maybe not a lot, but I think part of driving that change is you perspective people who are who may or not who may or may not go to law school in expressing the, your interest in talking about such issues in a law school setting. Um, and, um, yeah, those are my responses. Brilliant. Let's collect three questions at a time and get them to our panel, uh, and then we'll sort of cue that uh, a few times. So we'll take three, three questions in sequence uh, quickly. Um, hands. Do not be shy. Okay, I've got one here, then we need two more, please. Uh, this is for Professor Rosenberg. If you find law so deadening, then why do you teach it? <laughs> good, good question. The, yeah, the two question more, is, sorry, sorry, if sorry, I let me, find... Let me get two more questions. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. No, all right. Um, good first question, we need two more. And I'm, I'm happy to sit and wait, and I'm not going to call the director of the Public Policy Center, Professor Barabas. We need student questions here. Sarah. If you could take yourself back to the moment you started law school, what do you wish you could tell yourself? Great question. One more. Uh, yeah, here. Uh, yell, please. I was wondering if um, maybe the 
recent law school, or people could talk about their choice in law school and why they chose it specifically? Okay, so the questions are, uh, if law school is so bad, why do you teach law? What would you go back and tell yourself? And how would you sort of select? How, how did you select? How did you select? Same order. Same order. Uh, right. Uh, I knew that question was coming. I get it all the time. Uh, I agree with Sono, who law, here, law can be really intellectually very interesting. And the way I teach it is much more grounded in the economic, social, political, and cultural factors that influence decision making. So I'm a real uh, outlier. Sarah, if I could put myself back in law school for the first few days, I wouldn't have gone. Day three of property. 90 students were reading a case about a cement factory near Buffalo that managed to kill off most of the people in the town through noxious fumes and the like. And the heirs of those who died and the few survivors sue. And the professor says, what's going on here? And like an idiot, I raise my hand. You never do that in law school. I learned that the hard way. And I say, what's going on is a perfect example of what happens when a business is the major employer of the town. It controls the law, and the law bends to support its interests. And in front of 90 people, he says, Mr. Rosenberg, if that's the way you think, get the hell out of law school now. You're going to make a lousy lawyer. I knew I was right, and I was. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I'll, the last two questions, I'll have to consider them. It's hard to think back. I mean, you know, at that time, I hadn't seen Legally Blonde, so I can't say it was because <laughs> I saw Hell Woods. Um, uh, but, you know, I'm just going to punt it over to the, the lungs. And so, by the way, I will make one thing that uh, was said here and reiterate it. We have a wonderful, at Dartmouth, <laughs> alumni network, okay? You see it here, folks coming back to Dartmouth. And so take advantage of that. Uh, as you have access to the alumni network, see who's a practicing lawyer, send them an email. Uh, they will, as uh, uh, has been said, they would love to talk with you all. And so I'd encourage you to do that. Um, so I guess what I wish I had known, um, it starts hard, but it gets easier. Um, I think like Jasmine's been saying, you know, it is a little bit like a different language. It's, you know, the first year is all about learning to think like a lawyer. Um, so I think that I wish I had kind of been told that just kind of like let it wash over you at first and eventually you start picking it out and, you know, understanding how it works. You know, even figuring out how to like read a judicial opinion in a case there are good ways to do it, there are less efficient ways to do it, and just like figuring out that stuff takes some time um, and trial and error and you know working with your peers and your professors. Um, so it starts hard, it gets easier, you figure it out. Um, how to choose a law school? Um, I mean, I think like big picture, you want to go to the best school that you can get into. Um, in a lot of ways, that leaves a lot of doors open. Um, I think beyond that, uh, think about like geographically, where do you want to go? You know, like if you want to work somewhere other than the coasts, it might make more sense to go to the good local law school than to go to like, you know, some other school that's like in Boston or wherever because they have a better alumni network in that area, they can help you more. Um, I think also think about, you know, where you can get a scholarship. Like we've said law school is expensive, a lot of schools throw a lot of money at people, um, and that helps. Um, also, like, you know, again, plug for Georgetown. Um, I love the special first year program they had. A lot of schools have, you know, really interesting clinics or really interesting programs like that. Um, you know, do your research, and if there's something that you know you want to do, like if you know that you want to be an appellate lawyer and certain schools have appellate law clinics, try to go to one of those schools. Um, so I would say those are kind of the things to think about. <laughs> Just in, yeah. Um, yeah, if I could go back to the beginning of the 1L year, I think I would just say the law is so broad. Um, there's like so many different types. There's criminal or civil, just to list out a few, like employment, IP, tax, corporate, family, immigration, international. And 
property, labor, entertainment, so many. And then there's also different considerations, medium, small, large, do you want to do litigation, <coughs> transaction, all which may seem like unfamiliar terms, but you can start asking those questions now, just getting a sense. Um, I think one hour a year can also be a time to just explore um, and get a sense of like, what your interests may be. It's also like a good networking thing also to um, just be in contact with attorneys. But I would say um, just uh, to like explore different practice areas uh, because the law is so uh, diverse um, as far as what attorneys do on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, as far as the second question, which is how did I decide to go to the Boston College Law? Um, again, go to the uh, best school that you get into. Um, but two, geography does matter uh, because the career services of that law school that you attend to in whatever geographical region, oftentimes their connections are to the firms that are in the area. So for example, for Boston College, a lot, a lot of the connections that the career services has is to firms or government um, entities on in the New England area, so it's a little bit harder for someone from California to try and go back. Uh, but not to say that it can't be done, um, but it may be just like a little bit harder versus if, if someone had, who's trying to go back to California. <laughs> Who is this person, right? <laughs> um, in California, if you went to a California school, um, like all of that support system from the career service offices is linked to that all of the different firms and uh, government institutions in that geographic area. Um, but, so another consideration that I had uh, is environment as well. I asked like the students, like how they felt in the law school and Boston College Law um, has like, more of a reputation of being less cutthroat and more like collegial and you know, su students supporting one another. There's an emphasis on teaching and I really enjoyed my time at Dartmouth because uh, those were those were some of the things that I was looking for, and I kind of wanted to replicate it. It's a school that's not in the city; it's more in the suburbs. Um, so those were all some sort of like the considerations that uh, made me choose to go to Boston College Law, and it's good school. Think of other few questions. Um, this is for Professor. Oh, please shout your questions. Sorry. Please shout your questions so Bob Coates in the back can hear you. Uh, this is for Professor Rosenberg, but if you had to recommend a particular person to go to law school, what sort of factors would you be looking for in saying, yes, this is the right career path for you? Good question. Uh, one more. Yes. I'm wondering what the sort of day-to-day work-life balance is like, and especially if alums could compare that to their time at Dartmouth, like how different is it? I'm going to modify the second question, which is, uh, which is more difficult? Dartmouth or law school? So, each have two questions. Why don't we go in reverse order this time? Uh, starting with you. Um, I say law school is harder than Dartmouth. And Dartmouth is hard. So. And then what was the initial question? Ideal person to go. Oh, I, ideal person to go? Um, someone who's informed about what being a lawyer means, what it entails. Um, you can be any major. Um, you could be in the sciences, you could be in the uh, a government major. It doesn't matter. But just know that what law school means. Um, so I don't know if I really have anything to add on the what type of person is the ideal person, other than yeah, be informed, know what you want, know why you want to go. Um, on the which is harder, work-life balance. Um, I. I was a chemistry and government double major in college, so chem was hard. Um, uh, so I, I would say in that sense, uh, Dartmouth was harder uh, than law school for me. Um, you know, I didn't think law school was like all that hard. Um, you know, like I said, I think that you have to kind of like wait for it to click, and then once you've figured out, you know, how to study for the exams, how to understand what the is telling you, it gets easier. Um, straight up work-life balance, well
well in law school, and this was kind of my experience in college too, you know, as long as you were on top of things and planned, I was never really doing work past like nine o'clock at night, you know, that was just how I work best, like, I would go to class, do my work that day, be done, you know, work on the weekends, but not kill myself about it. Um, working in a big firm is a lot of hours. Um, it's definitely not a nine to five. Um, you know, there are days that I have been doing like, you know, 12 hour days for weeks in a row. But, you know, once you kind of figure out, again, figure out the law firm life, um, you can plan and have more control over your schedule the more senior you get. Um, yeah, but outside of law school, the work-life balance is not as good. Yeah, I would say in terms of ideal, I would look at ideal attributes of someone considering law school, and I would say that those attributes would be, for instance, uh, an ability to reason and to be clear in writing, uh, an ability to, uh, a kind of analytic ability to be able to look at something and to treat it objectively and to see how it works. And so if there's an aptitude for that, uh, that would obviously going to be uh, nice when you actually uh, start when you're in law school. Yeah, I have nothing to add. But I agree with what's been said about factors. Uh, in terms of harder, it, it may be personal. Uh, I found my first year of law school horrible, but then I figured out how it worked. I literally spent 20 minutes a day studying, got straight A's, <laughs> right? and I'm not brilliant. It's just it's a game. Uh, in many ways, I find it deeply anti-intellectual because it's so disconnected from anything real in the world. Once you figure out the rules of the game, it doesn't take any time. It's easy. Okay, maybe I'll ask a quick final question, and then we will bring the formal portion. And really, I would strongly encourage everyone to hang out and talk to our speakers and talk to one another. So when I look out at this audience, it's an unusually interesting group of people, and I know you all don't know each other. Some of you might know each other by reputation and think you dislike one another. <laughs> That's false too. So like seriously, hang out, talk to like ask two people next to you like whether they actually want to go to law school or not and why. Hang out. Um, the last question I want to throw out here to our panel though is as follows. Um, to what extent is, is most of what you've said generally applicable to sort of smart, ambitious people entering their mid-20s, irrespective of the career or field? Or to what extent have your comments really been about the law uh, in particular? And it's not just sort of general advice for smart and ambitious people in their mid-20s going out into the world. Um, Jerry, why don't we start with you? Yeah, that's a really good question. I'm not sure I have a lot to say about it. I hope my comments were aimed particularly at law school because studies have compared med school and business school to law school, and students enjoy med school and business school much more than they enjoy law school. Uh, both business school and med school are much more cooperative in the way they're taught. If you think about med school, after two years, medical students are actually doing medicine. They're in hospitals. Uh, uh, Rachel talked about clinics. I love my clinic, but it wasn't what I was doing full time. So I think I was aimed largely at law schools. Yeah, I would like. I would say the same. It's a. It's a nice question. Um, uh, and in part, I would say that because, unlike any other professional school, there is something about the law and the language of the law that's there to manage disagreement and to justify exercises of public power in a way that no other education uh, captures that. And so, you know, in that sense, there is something distinctive uh, about this question, should you go to law school versus, for example, med school or some other kind of professional school. Yeah, I mean, I think that at least a portion of what we've been talking about of, you know, it's hard when you go from college to doing something else to figure out how this new thing works and to understand what's going on and find your feet and take care of yourself and do all of that. So I think that portion at least, I think is widely applicable. Um, and like, I know my friends who went into finance and banking and who went into consulting had awful hours. They had very 
tough experiences in their first few years. And so I think that that, at least, is comparable, that there are a lot of jobs out there that are hard, it takes time to figure out, um, and all of that. I think, like you were saying, too, the language of the law is different, and kind of the gatekeeping mindset of being in law school is a little bit different, but I do think, generally, being in your early mid twenties is hard and figuring it out takes some time, so give yourself grace and forgiveness as you work through it. Yeah, I would also second that. Definitely give yourself uh, grace when considering your next steps. Uh, be adventurous as far as um, exposing yourself to different all the different types of careers that exist. It's not only law school. There's so many different career paths that you may have just not, um, just may not know about. Um, so part of the, uh, when I say be, inform yourself, it's not, it, it applies to law school, but also applies to like all the different other fulfilling career paths that exist um, in the different sectors. Um, and the experiences that you gain in different sectors, like you may not choose to go to law school straight out. You may take some time and do something else, um, but eventually later decide to go to law school. All of those experiences in between um, can only help you because in the end, lawyers are serving people in you know, varying different industries. So it's possible those experiences in like, an alternative field may help you uh, very well uh, later if you do decide to go to law school. Thank you all so, so much for sharing.